Good morning. Welcome to spring. Well, it will be spring at some point today. I'm not sure exactly how that works at the exact time of the equinox. I know tomorrow is the first full day of spring, but today we arrive. So I am so grateful for that. It's been, it's not been a bad winter to be honest. I'm just ready for, ready for the warmer temps, the drier days, and uh, I know many, many of my friends are too. So I'm grateful for that this morning. I am grateful that very soon I will be able to throw on a sweatshirt and have my morning coffee on my front porch with the warmth of the eastern sun shining through. And here's one thing that I look forward to every spring. When it gets to be about 65 or so degrees outside, it's got to be a little warmer, but I love going outside looking up into the sky, closing my eyes, and just feeling the warmth of the sun on my face after the long winter. The first time I can do that each year, it's a fantastic moment. I'm looking forward to that, and it's definitely going to be on my gratitude list. Good morning. Let me introduce myself. My name is Melissa Ebkin, and I'm the pastor of the Christian churches in Niantic in Iliopolis, Illinois, and I am the founder of Light Life and Love Ministries. That's an outreach effort for uh, for both of those entities. And it's a place to help people who haven't found a faith community yet to receive those spiritual resources. And for those who may be spiritual but not religious to be fed as well. I'm also the host of the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast. And I'm happy to join you every Monday morning at 9 a.m. Central Time here live on Facebook to share just a little bit of something that I hope can help you build your spiritual life. So today I am in part two of a gratitude series. Last week we talked about some fun ways that gratitude can lead to happiness and the importance of gratitude in our lives, how that makes our entire lives just so much better bumps it up we're happier people gratitude is really the secret sauce it really is for a happy life today i want to talk a little bit about the habits that make gratitude stick we all want to be grateful and we have some different ways that we do it but it takes a little bit to to get it to stick forming new habits takes some time and uh, I want to talk about a few strategies that you can help to submit that into a subconscious process, because that's when it becomes a habit. When it's no longer a conscious thought, but just a subconscious action, that's when we're in the good zone. So gratitude. Most of us were raised with it. We're taught as children by our parents, by our teachers, by elders to say thank you when we receive something or when someone does something nice for us, to thank them, to be grateful that we received that. And gratitude, I didn't learn that it could be a part of a spiritual practice until I was much older, but when I did, it has really changed the way I pray, the way I uh, interact with this world around me, and I'm really thrilled that that has become a part of that. Uh, I never knew gratitude was a part of a prayer practice. I guess that sounds kind of silly because we thank God for all of the good things, but gratitude as a practice in itself is prayer. And I didn't realize that until I was much older. And since then, I've been making it an essential part of my spiritual life. And as I cultivate this habit, I've noticed a significant shift in my outlook on life. That said, I've always been a glass half full person. I've always been an optimist. I've always looked for the good in any situation and seen the good in people. So that wasn't a huge shift for me, but it has really bumped that up in my life. And as I cultivate this habit, um, I begin to appreciate and notice the smaller things more. That's been a, a big win for me. Expressing gratitude also helped me to become more compassionate and empathetic toward others and allowed me to even more to see the good in people in situations. 
I have to say though that the biggest win is noticing gratitude in the smallest of things. That's been the real significant thing for me. And I have found that acknowledging one thing I'm grateful for each day has been the most powerful way to cultivate this as a habit. Sometimes I do it verbally in the moment. I just say, thank you, God, for the warmth of the sun on my face. Uh, sometimes I write it down in a journal. I don't journal every day. It's in a rotation of practices I do. I find that if I do the exact same thing every day, that it loses a little bit of its influence for me. So I have a rotation of spiritual practices that I know are fundamentally sound for me that I can always lean on. And when I change them up a bit, they're even more powerful for me because I do need that bit of change from time to time. So I don't always write in my journal, but I do have a couple handy. One I have, as I've mentioned before, by my bedside when my mind has these thoughts that are keeping me awake at night. I have a journal that is the uh, get the stuff out of my head so I can sleep journal. And that's a great place to write things down. I can look at it again in the morning. Uh, I have a journal that I use to write down things I'm grateful for or several other things. But anyway, I have that handy. Uh, so when we find something we're grateful for, we can write it down, we can express it verbally, or just meditate on it for a few seconds and revel in the in delight in it. Uh, it does require some conscious effort and training to train our brain to focus on the positive and tools are helpful to get us to that point. A gratitude journal for a month is a fantastic tool to do that. Uh, reading affirmations and quotes has also been a good standby. If you're a Pinterest person, create a Pinterest board that has inspiring quotes on gratitude and affirmations. If you've never done affirmations, I highly recommend the practice. They are really great at focusing your mind and your body and your spirit on on what it is that you're affirming about yourself or about your life or about this world. So I highly recommend affirmations and gratitude. Again, it doesn't just improve my spiritual well-being, but my overall life and health and outlook on life. And yes, health, physical health can be uh, highly influenced by gratitude and by our mental and emotional processes. And it helps me to be a lot more resilient. So some of the ways to go about this, uh, again, we can train our brains to be grateful. <clears throat> our subconscious mind directs 95%, 95% of our actions and thoughts. So think about that for a moment. Think about that for a moment, if you will. 95% of what we do is dictated by our subconscious. So then that begs the question, what is in our subconscious? Our brains each day clear out the, as we sleep at night, our brains clear out the non-essentials and make stronger connections for the things that it deems important. And it knows what is important versus what's not important by what we have spent time consciously dwelling on throughout the day. So if you spend time throughout the day worrying about things, your brain says, aha, those worries are important. I'm going to hardwire that tonight. If you spend time being grateful about things, your brain's going to say, that's the stuff. I got to make sure that that's plugged in. So, you know, kind of run through a list throughout the day of what you focus on. What are you feeding into your brain? So keep that in mind. Our subconscious mind really directs our life in profound and powerful ways. So we can be intentional about what we put into our subconscious. And it takes about three weeks. Experts say 21 days to form a new habit. A month is a good, a good chunk of time, I think. You can write it on your calendar. This month, I'm going to focus on this and be very intentional about it, schedule it in. And soon it will be a part of that subconscious process that directs our lives. So be conscious and intentional for a month about incorporating gratitude every day into your life. And 
by the time the temperatures are a little warmer, it's just going to be a natural part of who you are. So I find that really encouraging. And then uh, use tools like gratitude journals and affirmations that I mentioned earlier. Those things, even if you're not a daily journaler, you can be a journaler for, for a month while you're creating these habits. Uh, read the inspiring quotes and the affirmations. Just take that time to consciously every day focus on something that you're grateful for. Connecting with other people is a really profound, meaningful, powerful way to form gratitude. Uh, by focusing on the needs and concerns of others, we can trigger a sense of empathy and gratitude, and it helps us to shift away from dwelling on our own worries and concerns and uh, appreciate the good things that we have in our lives. So connect with others, go volunteer somewhere in see that it's going to make a big difference on you in a lot of ways when you volunteer or do something on behalf of others. And then I talked about this last week, make it fun, have a blessing box, a blessing jar that uh, put a label on it of something that you're connected to. <clears throat> Maybe an animal shelter or a cause that's important to you, your kid's school or a vacation fund, what have you, put something on it that's meaningful to you. And every day, uh, take a minute to consider what you're grateful for and then drop some change into that jar. When the jar is full, go donate it to that cause. It's going to feel really good and it all comes from gratitude. Or if it's for some extra spending money on vacation to do something extra fun, that's going to be a blast and it all is a result of your gratitude. So those are some some fun ways, some tried and true ways to get gratitude to be a normal part of your lives, a, a regular part, I should say, of your routine, getting it into your subconscious so that it's just a part of who you are. Uh, gratitude will do so much for your overall health and well-being and your outlook on life. And even in difficult times, when you can find something to be grateful for, it can shine a little bit of light in an otherwise dark place. So that's what I have for you this week. I invite you to try some of these things and reach out and let me know what you're trying and how it's affecting you. I hope that, uh, I hope that uh, you can find what works for you and help this habit stick. That's all I have for this week. I'll see you here again next Monday. Bye for now.